stock management for retail. In this demo, I will be showing you how to add stock levels to your products, perform stock takes, and other tools and tips to improve stock accuracy and ordering. This demo will last approximately 20 minutes. Firstly, we need to determine if we have master products. Master products are items you purchase from the supplier in bulk. For example, a box of 20 products. You then sell these individually to the customer. For more information, please watch our retail master products demo. Once you're happy that you have or have not got master products, we can get started now and show you how to update your stock levels. Stock adjustments. The great thing about stock adjustments is you can add or remove items in inventory, depending on reasons. For example, you could add new stock onto your back office, or you can remove stock, maybe something is damaged or out of date. To do this, we're going to go on to our master product first. So here we recently added beans, 20, and it's a master product. There's 20 cans of beans in a pack. This is what we order from our suppliers. We go to advanced and we scroll down to stock adjustment just here. Firstly, select your location where you want to enter your stock. You may have a shop floor or warehouse and each might have a separate stock value. You then enter your current stock value. Now this is boxes. This is per 20. So if I put two, this means currently there are 40 cans of beans in stock. You can then add on any extras. You may have a few loose cans. For example, we'll put three loose cans. So in total, we have two full boxes and an additional three, equaling 43. We can then scroll to minimum stock. Minimum stock allows you to track when your items are running low. To do this, we may decide we want to be told when we're down to one box left. Maximum stock, you can fill this in if you want to have a little bit of additional help when creating things like purchase orders. Your maximum stock value may be four boxes. This means that on your current purchase order, if we were to go through this information, we currently have two and the maximum we can order is four. The purchase order may generate the additional two boxes automatically for you. On order at the moment is blank. We currently don't have any purchase orders active we will go through how to process purchase orders a little bit later. We have an alerts box. This is to receive a notification when we have run down to our minimum stock value. For email alerts, we'll tick this box. This goes to your stock email address when creating your locations and locations and devices. Your stock email address would be in there. And finally, we select the reason. The reason for adding this at the moment would be classed as new stock and the staff member that added this in. We have our supplier tracked with this product and we can press add. You can now carry on going through the rest of your locations again, if you have those, but you can also adjust stock. Maybe you miscounted, maybe something is broken. Maybe you dropped a full crate of beans and they've all split. If so, reduce your current stock by one. Scroll across to your reason. The reason for the adjustment would be wastage. The staff member that added this in. And then press save. This then saves that data. We've now successfully added a stock adjustment. Stock movements. Stock movements 
It's the ability for you to add and remove stock from various locations and send them to another location. For example, you may have a shop, but you may also have a separate warehouse where you hold your stock. This could be added as another location and you can move stock between the two. For this part of the demo, we're now going to look at the stock control tab. For stock movements, select the stock movements tab. And we're going to add a new stock movement. Firstly, select the location delivered stock from and deliver stock to. Here, we'll have from one location going to the warehouse. As you can see, these two boxes are asterisked, so we have to fill in this information. Select the staff member, and the reason would be internal movement. Now we're going to check our stock. We're going to insert, and we're going to select the product and how many would like to move. Now this is on master products, so remember we're moving boxes in bulk. We want to move one box from one location to our warehouse. Once you're happy with this, we're going to insert and add stock. This would print out a sheet of paper confirming that you've now referred this stock to be moved. We then go back to our stock movements. And now we see our most recent stock movement at the top here from one location going to the warehouse. The time will confirm if it's the newest one and the total cost price is one box, which we put in as £3.50 when we added in that master product. The status currently is sent. We need to change this to received. We click on view details. Edit and receive. And now we can change a few details. We want to confirm this is being delivered. Select the staff member. Any notes? Maybe one box is missing or some of the cans are missing from the bulk. Once you're happy, you can press save. Once this is done, you've successfully moved one pile of stock from one location to the warehouse and the status will now be set as received. Purchase orders. Purchase orders are documents sent from you as a buyer to a supplier with a request to order products. Purchase orders can then be processed as received when the delivery arrives to update stock automatically. To create a purchase order, we go to the purchase orders tab and we're going to select add purchase order in the top right hand corner. Select the expected delivery date, whatever that may be. And now we want to select where we deliver the stock to. You can select your location here. And also ordered by the staff member. Now we will select this box, show all suppliers and stock tracked products. This will show all the list of all of our suppliers once added. I'm going to select the top one and we're going to show products. We scroll down and this will show all of the products that are now synced with that supplier. We now come to order. Select the quantity you'd like to order. And please bear in mind, this is on master products. So we're ordering 
two full boxes of 20. Once you're happy, you can create notes if you want to. And we're going to generate order. Once that's confirmed, and you're happy with this, you can select done. Now, once that delivery arrives, we can go back to our purchase orders, select the recent purchase order, and you can see here we've got an order reference number and a status as ordered. You've also got the dates here and the location and supply details. On that purchase order, we're going to select details. And once you're happy, the delivery has arrived, all correct, you can select receive. Do, however, check your deliveries. You can edit these in a moment. We're going to select edit. Select the staff member that's received that delivery. And again, any notes, check your orders just in case something has, is missing. You can change the quantity if you want to. Update purchase order. And select receive. Oh, select the staff member. There we go, and select receive. You've now completed that purchase order. Once we go back, you can see now reference number six with the correct date has now been received. This has added those stock values automatically onto your system. This is great if you have a supplier with quite a few products you can update these all in one go. That's how you create purchase orders and receive them. Stock takes. The importance of stock taking is clear. It allows you to monitor and increase gross profit, reduce loss, and manage your product inventory more efficiently. You can choose if you want to stock take all items at one time or perform smaller stock takes, maybe a shelf or category at a time. To perform a back office stock take, select stock control and then back office stock take. Select the staff member who will be performing this and the correct location. We can now start stock take. There are two different ways to enter products. Search the products manually. Or if your products have a barcode allocated to them and you have a scanner, we can select the quick scan tab. We can also create lists. You may want to do a stock take on a full shelf or a category. For this, select the create list tab. We can split by suppliers, by categories, by brands, or by wet, dry, if this is applicable. Please remember, when performing a stock take, some products may be master products. These are items purchased in bulk from your supplier, and your master products in bulk will live within master products. All individual items that are purchased from a supplier can be found in their respective categories. For this, I'll select master products. We'll set the filter and we'll create the list. It now tells me the master products currently within that category. We only have one for now, but you may have quite a few. We have beans, a box of 20, and expected there are three full boxes and one single can. We can now enter the actual and remaining stock. 
this is expected. This is our data we will enter. If our stock is correct, we will set three boxes and one individual can. We can review the stock take and it will show no discrepancies. We'll resume the stock take and we'll assume there is a missing can. We'll review the stock take again. And now this will show one discrepancy. This may be correct. We need to set the reason for the discrepancy. We can set the reason on individual items, or we can select the reason to apply to all. If you have lots of items with lots of missing discrepancies, it will be easier to apply these to all. We have zero uncounted and remove uncounted. You may not stock take a full category. If so, remove uncounted. The zero uncounted will set your stock levels to zero to any products that are not counted within that category. You may not want that to happen. Once we are happy with this, and all of our discrepancies have been checked, we can complete stock take. This will highlight the stock takes tab. We can now view our stock take data. Select the last stock take and you can check the date and time for this. We can now view details. This will show you the expected amount and volume, and the amount counted. It will total the actual cost, the variance, and also the cost variance. Remember the cost variance is where you can manage and reduce your loss, and also help increase your gross profit. Once you're happy with this information, we can also export this CSV, Word, Excel, or Print. We've now successfully completed a back office stock take. That brings us to the end of our retail stock management demo. Don't forget, if you are a new business with us, you have access to your implementation manager for any further questions. For our existing customers, you have access to our support lines. Thank you for watching.